So what is up YouTube? This is Jones for Gulf Coast Kitchen 850. And today I am out here on the beach. I uh, just entered the Gulf Breeze Bait and Tackle Pompano Tournament. So I'm going out here to try to catch some Pompano today. See if I can uh, limit out on some Pompano. Maybe catch a nice big one so I can enter in the tournament. And just scout some spots out. There's no one out here on the beach today. So I got it to myself. As of right now, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. So the sun is coming up. And... It's time to get this thing started. Let's see if I can catch some fish. So you guys stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you're still with me, give me a thumbs up because it helped the video. Like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in a minute. Let's go. Y'all see this little sand flea right here? This is what you call a pompano skittle. This is a pompano skittle right There's a nice fish on out here. Come on. It's a bar right there, so I gotta get this fish over the bar. Come on. I get him over this bar. Then we all good. I think I got him over the bar. Here he is. Let's see what I got. What is that? Right like a pompano, guys. Oh, I think I got me a big one. Nice pompano. Nice pompano this morning. Oh, nice one. Woo! This is a nice fat pompano this morning. Look at that. That is a nice one. So you guys heard me saying if I get the fish over the bar, we good. What I mean by that is Fish, I fish in front of a sandbar and I fish behind a sandbar. That fish was behind the sandbar. So whenever you catch a fish and it's behind the sandbar, most of the time it swims along the bar. So if you try to force the fish over the bar, nine times out of ten you are going to lose that fish because the pressure of the hook trying to pull it over the sandbar usually either will break the hook or it'll knock the hook out of the fish's mouth. That's what I found. So what I do is I let it ride the sandbar until a wave comes and when that wave hits i start back it back pedaling as fast as i can while reeling to get that fish over the bar so you want to have it drag and set loose so it can swim the bar and then when you get a wave comes and it hits where that fish is start back pedaling back to get that fish over the bar that way you won't lose your fish so that's a little information i like to share to you guys because i have a lot of guys on my channel that are new to surf fishing and they always ask questions you know give me tips and stuff so that's the tip of the day if you're fishing behind the bar wait for that wave to come and back pedal to get that fish over the top of that bar and you will be a hundred more times successful this right here is what i like to fish for for whiting so i just have a small hook on with the orange bead on it and it's just on regular um monofilament uh, this is 20 pound monofilament leader line and I have the same way here and I just put a little piece of shrimp on and I tip it with fish gum or sometimes I just put straight shrimp on it just depending on what the uh, whiting want for today so you see how tiny that is that's a little bitty piece of shrimp and I tipped it with some orange blaze fish gum with my bead and in the bottom I just put straight shrimp no fish gum and we'll see which one gets uh, hit first and then that'll tell me what the whiting want to bite today what is up youtube this is drums with gilkas fishing 850 today i'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks to make you a better pompano fisherman in the surf first off we're going to start with location you 
want to find a good spot on the beach where there's sandbars, cuts, and drop-offs. Find you a sandbar where it's a deep drop-off in front and behind it. And you want to fish in front of the sandbar and behind the sandbar. You want to find you a cut where the water's crashing in and it cuts off and fish like the trouble in between those cuts. And you want to place your baits in those sandbars and in those cuts. If you look at the water, you can tell the difference between the lighter color and the darker color. That lighter color is a sandbar. Wherever the waves start breaking at, crashing, turning white, that's when they hit the sandbar. You want to make sure you get your lines behind where they're hitting and turning white at. You see that dark, deep water. That's a sandbar all along, all along there. So that's a major key. Find your sandbars and get behind them and in front of them. We're going to talk about baits. I like to fish with multiple baits. First, we're gonna start off with shrimp. I like to use fresh shrimp, take the head off, peel the shrimp, and place it on your hook. Also, I like to use sand fleas, live sand fleas. These are big ones, but you wanna get smaller size, about half of this size of a sand flea, and put it on. Couple sand fleas right here. Some fresh ones. I got a whole school sand flea right, so don't laugh at me. I like to use fish gum. You can use fish gum by itself, or you can tip your bait with fish gum. And what I mean by tipping your bait with fish gum is if you use a shrimp or sand flea, you put your sand flea or your shrimp on first, you cut your little piece of fish gum, and you hook it on the tip of the hook and it kind of holds your bait in place, but also it gives it a color and it throws off a scent that the fish love. Redfish, pompano, anything uh, really you can catch on fish come on the beach. My favorite flavor is glazed orange. I've had my best luck using that. There's so many different colors. I can't wait to use this green and see how this green does. And also this ballistic blue crab. Let's talk about rigs and jigs. These are Salty's Pompano rigs. I like to use these uh, on the surf because these floats allow the bait to float from the bottom of the water column and the fish like to feed up high. I also like to use these Salty's Pompano jigs. Just jig them on the bottom for Pompano that's close in or farther out. You can find in what depth they're swimming in. So also, we're going to talk about rod and reel setups. So you want to get you a 10 to 12 foot surf rod. This is a 10 foot dial rod I picked up at Dick Sporting Goods. It was only $25. If you don't believe me, there's a price, $24.99. This rod has done really good. I paired it with a Shimano Saragossa uh, 5000 fishing reel. And this reel costs about $250. Um, but you don't have to have a reel that costs that much. You can go get a pin Fierce, which is about 40, 50 bucks and get you a 10 to 12 foot rod. And I like to use braid because you can cast braid farther. And then I put my Pompano rigs on the end of it. And you wanna put a four ounce weight and that can sling that bait out to get it past those sandbars. And they're stiff and they feel, feel good on the water. I know I'm in another angle, in another camera frame, because I forgot to say this while I was on the beach. So I'm shooting in my truck now because I remember. But another factor is water temperature. You want to make sure that the water is anywhere from 68 to 74 degrees. Um, that's like prime time water temperature. And that's when most fish are active is in that temperature. Yes, you can catch fish in a lower temperature or a higher temperature. But just from my experience and watching other guys and other people experiences that the water temperature needs to be between 68 to 74. And that's when you're going to get a lot more action catch a lot more pompano, redfish, Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, yes, majority of fish like that water temperature. So make sure you check that water temperature before you go out. Also check the wind directions. We don't want to go fishing when the wind is 17, 18 miles per hour. I've done it and it's been horrible. You can barely keep your, you know, your weight in the water, your bait in the water. So make sure that you Check the weather. Uh, fish do like rough weather, but if it's too bad, you're gonna waste your time, you're gonna waste gas, you're gonna waste money and bait. So those are tips. Always check the water 
temperature and check that weather. And those will help you be better and more susceptible to my surface. All right, guys, I hope that video was helpful. And I hope that you guys can use some of those tips and get out on the surf this spring and lemon out on Pompano. If the video was helpful to you guys and you enjoyed it, can you please leave me a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you catch some Pompano, go to Facebook, Gulf Coast Fishing 850, and share your photo and let me know that you watched my video and some of my tips was helpful for you guys.